Hello guys. Um, I know I didn't make a video for a really long time. Kind of got a bunch of work that I've been doing and stuff. So I decided, oh, might as well. I got like a little time on my hands right now. So I make a video, and then the lights are off, and I'm gonna turn them on right now. Night fish. Yep, he's going back in. Well, things grew a little bit. Marijuana grew, as you can see. There, there you go. Paku grew a little bit too. Looks a bit nicer. His belly's starting to get a little darker. Yep, there he is. Uh, the knife, you can see him right there. But, yeah, he's, his tail, ball of sharks. So, that was just a little update, you know. But, this video will be about, uh, I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm doing a lot of videos on the big tank. I don't know, just, it's my, one of my favorites. Uh, my probably my most favorite to be honest, because the fish are awesome. Like, seriously. So this video um, will be about. I finally thought that I should make it today, and I made it. It'll be about the silver arowana. I decided I would make it today because well, I've had him for like a while now. Honestly, he he nearly doubled in size. I got him when he was like three inches, three, yeah, about that size, and he's like at seven inches right now, <laughs> so I thought, okay, I doubled him in size, I had him for almost six months now, not maybe not six months actually, maybe like four to five, and then I'm thinking, okay, might not make a video, he hasn't jumped out, he hasn't even attempted, no drop by, nothing, he shouldn't get drop by. And yeah, here goes. Number one about silver arowanas, the tank space. Okay, number one priority: a minimum tank size for silver silver arowana. Actually, any type of arowana is two, I would say two hundred gallons minimum. Okay, guys, like this isn't his permanent tank. This this won't this will hold him until he's like. Uh, let's see at most two feet but probably not by that time I'm gonna have like a pond for him set up but right now he's gonna be growing in this tank for now reaching like 20 inches hopefully hopefully same with the Paku he's gonna get some bulk <laughs> and the knife um, but yeah tank size it's really important for all big fish Especially Arwana because these guys tend to swim a lot. He's always moving. Uh, he's always moving and he loves to you know, swim around the big open space. And width is more important than height, obviously, because Arowanas are top dwellers, except Jardinis and Asian Arowanas, or Australian Arowanas, Pearl Arowanas. That's all the same. I just call them Jardini. Asian arrows are different, but they're the red and colorful ones. But they're mid to top, and silvers, blacks, those ones, or any type of the wild ones, are yeah, yeah, and blacks are found at the top in the Amazon. The second thing, uh, I should tank dimensions for this tank is six by two. Six is length, two feet is width. Um, so I would go with that size to start with. You could act, um, actually potentially keep him in that that footprint, and he'll be fine. But honestly, he'll be like turning really just, like to the limit, and then some problems may occur. So actually, I would say six by three, and then getting like it doesn't have to be 
this high. This tank is 29 inches high. I know it can be uh, like two feet and under, so you can get that three foot width or 2.5 wide. And that'd be really great. Second thing is a lid. Arowans are jumpers in nature. They will jump for insects on the branch. They'll even jump at little monkeys. Anything, okay? They jump six feet in the air is recorded at highest. And man, to man, okay? So we don't even know if that's actually the highest. Um, that this says they're probably, lids will probably hold them down really good. But if they, by the time they pass the one foot mark and onwards, you are definitely going to need to put some, like, serious, uh, depending on what kind of lids you have, like if it's just a cover, like a plastic, then that won't do, like get some type of thick glass, and see I got some food on this side, well not some food, but I got food just to cover that side, but he's not big enough, I know he won't jump, he hasn't even tried to, so you should be fine for now. Um, the third thing is feeding, right? Now lots of people think arowana is a predator. It, that's partially true in nature. 50% of the diet is fish, live fish, dead fish, whatever, fish. But in the aquarium, that that's not good to mainly feed that, that type of diet. Plus, they, these aren't wild caught, okay? They're like, they're not from the Amazon. They're from store, from bred on farms, okay? They're not used to the type of food. They've been grown to feed commercial foods, usually. Uh, so, what I recommend is getting Hikari food sticks, right there. And I occasionally feed Massivore, he kind of eats that. And cichlid gold pellets. And then every once or twice a week, drop in a cube of bloodworms or brown shrimp, vice versa. <laughs> and if I could cabin the catch, you know, kind of like a cockroach, something like that, or a cricket, go ahead, give it to him. <clears throat> He'll like it. Or an earthworm, make sure you clean it uh, properly. And no, um, you know, chemicals are on the uh, insect. If you spray chemicals anywhere near your house, I wouldn't suggest picking any insects up anyways. <clears throat> Sorry. And the reason why you don't feed life food, unless they're gut loaded with, like, flakes, all that kind of stuff, <clears throat> it's, there's no nutritional value, it's just taking up space, it's not going to make them grow really fast, not fast, but, you know, the proper growth rate. And... The condition known as drop eye, where one eye, or even both eyes, look downwards, which is not normal, and they should be looking up, like mine. That condition is typically believed to be developed by the arowana eating too much live foods, developing like fat behind the eye. So I'm just gonna, not going to be safe, play it safe, and not feed live foods, like fish. <coughs> But you can feed live insects, like I said, as they do that in the wild. And you can feed shrimp, frozen shrimp, market shrimp, that kind of thing. Make sure you clean it and peel it properly. <coughs> Third thing, uh, fourth thing, is the filtration, honestly. That's really the last thing. Filtration along with the water quality. Now... These guys really make a lot of waste. You may not see it happen though, but they make a lot of waste. They're big fish, lots of waste. Okay, uh, I recommend since it probably will be in a big tank eventually. I recommend. Oh, there's some poop right there. But <clears throat> I recommend getting sumps and canister. Then also, don't make the filter make too much water current at the top. That's why I just made the power head, so the other fish can still benefit from that current, but it's not all the way at the top. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Yeah, the pocket does it sometimes. He goes along the glass. But, yeah. That's how we keep arowanas. And I hope you guys subscribe, like, 
dislike if you didn't really like this, if this wasn't helpful to you. But comment and tell me what you want me to share next and tell you guys.